So whenever you use any of these methods, you guys need to state exactly how you're going to do it. So if you're doing the hat method, you have to say, I'm going to write everybody's name down on a piece of paper. Or if you assign, if you've got like a bunch of dogs and you're doing some kind of experiment or something, you assign every dog a number and then you put all the numbers in the hat, right? And then you have to say, I'm not going to replace them and I'm going to draw out however many you need for numbers, okay? Calculator method, same thing. You need to say, I'm going to label every individual in the class 1 through 20. And then I'm going to use my calculator technology random integer from 1 to 20. And you have to state skipping repeats, right? So you have to kind of say exactly what you're doing. So same thing with table D. Table D is in the back of the book, and I want you guys to find it first. So open your statistics book. I think it's before the glossary, but, oh, yeah, it's really close to the other tables. Like, turn one page over. You, like, open right to it. So if you're going to use table D, you first have to state you're going to give everybody a number. However, it's different with table D because you have to go by the number of digits that you have. So, like, say I have 20 people in this class, right? 20 people is two digits. Every single person needs a two-digit number. So you would label from 0, 1 to 20, okay? Let's say that I had 3,500 of whatever it was, right? Then what would my first number be? Okay, all the way up to however many you have. So if you've got something with four digits, that's the amount of data you have, then your first number has to be 0001. If you have something with three digits, your first number is 001. Okay? Um, and then you have to state that you're going to randomize. You actually have to say you're going to read consecutive groups of digits, and whether you need to say whether that's two-digit numbers, three-digit numbers, four-digit numbers. Okay? And you're going to read from left to right across whichever line they tell you or you pick on table D. So they label them lines 101 through lines 150. Okay? Then you need to say that you're going to ignore any group of digits that wasn't used as a label. In other words, anything outside of this interval or anything outside of this interval. So if I'm doing 0, 1 to 20, I could get the number 86. That's not going to help me. It's not one of my numbers. Okay, so you skip it. And you also have to state if you're going to skip repeats, which you probably are, so you don't pick anyone twice. And then you want to state when you're going to stop. So maybe I'm choosing four people out of this class. You need to say how many people you're choosing or how many numbers you need. Okay. a simple random sample with table D. So the school newspaper is planning an article on family-friendly places to stay over spring break at a nearby beach house. The editors intend to call four randomly chosen hotels to ask about their amenities for families with children. They have an alphabetized list of 28 hotels in the town. Use table D at line 130 to choose a simple random sample of four hotels. What is the first step, you guys? Here's all our hotels. What do we have to do? Label them. So you actually state that. You don't need to write the hotels down in the problem or whatever, but you're going to actually say, label the hotels from 0, 01 And then the next step is we're going to read across, and they tell us for this one, line 130. If they don't tell you, you can pick and you just state which one. So I'm going to read across um, from left to right, always, on line 130. 
And as we read across those digits, it's important that we say we're going to skip any numbers outside of this interval. So if I get 29, I'm going to skip it. If I get 50, I'm going to skip it. And we're going to skip any repeats. And we're going to choose four numbers because we want to call four code bars. Or four unique numbers is one way to say that if you don't want to say skip and repeat. You could say I'm going to put four unique numbers. And then you actually do it. All right. And so on this one, actually, I should have also said, you guys, that I'm picking two digit numbers. Read across from left to right on 130. And somehow you want to say I'm picking two digit numbers. Because you might be picking three digit numbers or four digit numbers. So if you guys go to line 30 or 130 and we just start like reading across two digit numbers, the first number is 69. Is that one inside the range? Nope. So I cross it off. We're not going to use it. What's the next number? 05. Okay, write that down. Is that a good one? Yep, because it's between 0, 1, and 28. Okay, what's the next number? 16, because it's the 1 and the 6. Even though there's a space, we still do 16. Is that a good one? Yep. Okay, and then what's the next number? 48. Too big, so nope. What's the next one? It is 17. That's a good one. What's the next one? 87. 78? Wow, okay guys, 87. Nope, what's the next one? 17. Should we do that one? No, we already used it. What's the next one? 40. Nope, what's the next one? 09? 95? Okay, what's the next one? So another 17. Okay, what's the next one? Nope, what's the next one? What's the next one? why your calculator is better. What's the next one? <laughs> Somebody find me the next good one. 20? Cool. So then we're going to actually state which hotels we got. So you would like say, all right, we're going to call Beach Castle, all right? And we're going to call Ramada and whatever else, okay? Yes. All right, so that's table D. You guys are going to practice that on a couple of them today. And then we want to talk about some other methods of random sampling. So a simple random sample would be like taking the whole school and we find how many kids we want to put a survey out to, right? Well, we can also use stratified random samples, which is groups of individuals who are similar to each other. Write that down. Stratified random sample, also known as strata. So maybe we want to survey all the students at Devlin. We're going to ask them something, but maybe it's important to note if they're a freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior. So we can split up. Let's say we want to do interview 100 people. We can split them up so we get 25 freshmen chosen randomly, 25 sophomores chosen randomly, 25 juniors, and 25 seniors. Okay, those are called strata when we're grouping them alike. Okay, and that would form our whole sample of still 100. You could also do males and females. Maybe you want 100 people, but you want 50 of them to be male and 50 of them to be female. Okay. The other kind of sample is called a cluster sample. This is individuals that are located near each other. And it's important to note that your cluster should reflect the sample or the population. So if we had some sort of homeroom here at Devlin that were split up equally, like you had some seventh graders, some eighth graders, some ninth graders, some tenth graders, some eleventh graders, some twelfth graders, right? And we just randomly put people in rooms 
that would be a cluster. They're all located in the same room, so it's convenient, it's easy. All right, so clusters are all different kinds of people that reflect what the population would look like. Uh, so clusters often save time and money. And then cluster sampling works best when the clusters look just like the population but on a smaller scale. And we just talked about the homeroom example, getting uh, a bunch of different people in one room. So stratum or stratified are all similar individuals, grouped similarly, and clusters are just a small sample close to each other that reflect the population. So let's talk about which is which on this one. Um, the student council wants to conduct a survey during the first five minutes of an all school assembly in the auditorium about use of the school library. They would like to announce the results of the survey at the end of the assembly. The student council president just wants your help as a statistics officer. All right, so there's 800 students present at the assembly. And a map of the auditorium is shown below. Note that students are seated by grade level and the seats are numbered from one to 800. This is really hard to read, but it says that the ninth graders are sitting in 601 to 800. 11th graders are 201 to 400, 10th graders are 401 to 600, 12th graders are 1 to 200. All right, so they're separated in groups for you. Uh, describe how would you, you would use your calculator to select 80 students to complete the survey with each of the following. Okay, so let's say we're going to use our calculator just to do a simple random sample. A simple random sample. First thing, everybody's already in a seat, so they're already labeled 1 to 800, right? And then we would just pull out our calculator, and we would do random integer from 1 to 800, how many times? 80 times, all right. And then you would go distribute your survey amongst all those numbers. That would take a while, right? You'd be walking around the auditorium looking for seat 52 and whatever, okay? That's just a simple random sample. Stratified, so strata are grouped similarly. How are we gonna split these groups if we want strata? by their grade level, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, right? So if we have 800 students, how many are in each grade level according to this? 200, right, in each grade level. So how many do I want from each grade level if I need 80 total students? Yeah, divide by four, right, 80 divided by four. So I have 20 from each grade level. I need 20 freshmen, 20 sophomores. So how am I gonna use my calculator this time? From one to what? Yes, I'm gonna go from one to 200 20 times. And then I've got 20 12th graders. And then I'm gonna go from 201 to 400 20 times. And then I've got 20 11th graders, etc. cetera. Make sense? Still gonna be a huge pain to run all the way around the auditorium finding those people, okay? So the last way that is probably the easiest is called a cluster. So if you think about how they're sitting, you guys, they're sitting in rows going across. So if I take a column, what is going to happen? This, this says dot, 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 too. There's a whole bunch of these, right, going back. So if you go all the way back, you're not necessarily getting one from each grade. You're getting a whole bunch, though, from each grade, equally split. So that column is going to reflect the population. So we have 800 seats and 20 of these columns. So how many are in each column? This is not representative of the picture because it's not. Yeah, if you do 800 divided by 20, you've got 40 in each column, okay? So how many columns do I need? You need 80 kids. So I would go ahead and do my calculator from one to 20 and then I only need two of them, so maybe I get six, and I take that column, and then whatever the other one was, I circled 15, 10. And then you have two clusters that you pick, and that's probably going to be the most convenient because you can pass back locators. Make sense? Okay. I'm going to skip that one. There you go.